In our book, Hold On To Your Kids, we did the last two chapters about the digital media, and it's a huge topic. And I would say, if I had boys your kid's age, I would not near them, let them near any device. The screens themselves affect the brain, the developing brain. A kid spends watching screens, the more it depletes their dopamine receptors. The child develops an attachment relationship with the machine. What we say about the digital media is, it's a good thing, but so is sex, and so is alcohol. Digital media is the very opposite of genuine human contact. Maturation depends on relationship with human beings. With full respect for the power of the media and the value and the amazing services and, and it can provide, uh, there's no denying that, there's no point. See this, I'm sure you see it in London. A parent is pushing a kid in the tram, and what the parent doing? Interacting with their cell phones. What's the message to the kid? They're not important. That I'm not important. Right. Tell me about social media because um, my boys aren't there yet. Although yeah. they do, they can find they can find a their way to a laptop pretty quick. But they're not on social media. But but my daughter is, of course. Yeah. Um, obviously, that peer group now is readily available oh, yeah. in this new addictive device that's more addictive. I don't know if you would say than heroin and cocaine. Well, it's very addictive. Yes. Okay. In our book, Hold On to Your Kids, we did the last two chapters about the digital media. And it's a huge topic. And I would say, if I had boys your kid's age, I would not near them, let them near any device. I will not let them near a device. That's what I heard that the Silicon Valley CEOs do. I heard that they tell their nannies they're not to see a device. You have to leave it in your car. That's absolutely right. Okay, tell not me at, Not at that age. Because, um, first of all, the screen themselves are mesmerizing. Yeah. And the more time a kid spends, and they're addictive. You try and peel a kid off their device, you see typical addictive uh, uh, protest and outrage. Yeah, anger. Anger, all that kind of stuff. Right. Because you're, really you're really coming between the addict and their addiction. And you know you from your own addictive history, or me from mine, what it's like when somebody, somebody tries to come between you and, and your addictive target behavior. You know? So first of all, the screens themselves affect the brain, the developing brain. So the more times a kid's, a kid spends watching screens, the more it depletes their dopamine receptors. And dopamine receptors are the ones that get implicated in addiction later on, the, the incentive motivation um, uh, circuitry of the brain. Number one, the child develops an attachment relationship with the machine. And then as they get older, they, this is with one and two or three or four year olds. So what we say about the digital media is, it's a good thing, but so is sex, and so is alcohol. But we don't give two-year-olds alcohol, and we don't introduce five years old to sexual practices. Why? Because they're not ready to handle it. So you give digital media to kids when they're old enough to handle it. When are they old enough to handle it? When they no longer need, rely on it to meet their emotional needs, but they use it for the function for which it was developed, which is information and communication. Those are legitimate goals. But, most, but when kids are immature and their attachment needs have not been met yet, they can use the digital media to meet their attachment needs, which displaces real human attachments. So what happens on Facebook? Kids have friends. What happens on Facebook? Kids like each other. These are attachment dynamics, except the friends are not real friends because a real friend is somebody who really knows you intimately and accepts you and supports you and wants the best for you. These Facebook friendships are highly conditional as shown by the fact that when people displease each other, they defriend each other. And the likes are not real likes because what is being presented on digital media is a similar acronym of the real self. It's, 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 it's a, self-chosen particle of who I really am. That's what shows up on Facebook. And so people like a part of me. But how does that satisfy my need to be accepted and respected and loved for who I really am? It actually undermines it. So the digital media is the very opposite of genuine human contact. Now, can it be used that way? Sure. If you got two young kids now, and if you got parents who live in the United States, 
and those kids want to connect with their grandparents, what a great device Skype is or Zoom is. Where not they can connect, it's not just a letter, it's actually, you know, there's a, the New York Times had an article about a five-year-old who walks into this friend's house, sees a computer and says, hey granddad, because he, he only met his granddad, or mostly through the, anyway, that's a great way to connect. Mm -hmm. But who needs to be in charge of that? In other words, the digital media can be introduced to the child's life when the parents can stay in control of it. When the media takes over and the child has got this addictive relationship, the child is not ready for it. So we say, don't introduce it too early, number one. And number two, stay on top of it and you'll be in charge. What kind of age are we talking here? Well, we desist from giving a specific age only because each child matures at a different rate. Eight, 10, 12? Yeah, as long as it's under the direction of the parents. Okay. When, when Gabby started school in the equivalent of seventh <coughs> grade, they gave all the girls iPads. Terrible. That was the policy of this private school here I in know. London. And they're like, and we were like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. that's how we teach now. Everything goes on there. And they monitor them, they do the Wi Fi thing, but. You're not impressed with that. <laughs> I'm not impressed with it because, okay. because my guess is that very quickly that iPad became a, a vehicle for social media and, and, and peer relationships rather than the uh, intention, the educational uh, intent of it. Yeah. And uh, real teaching happens through uh, personal contact, through engagement, through inviting and eliciting the kid's curiosity through appealing to the child's increasingly sophisticated mind to hold complex ideas, contradictory ideas sometimes at the same time, those depend on maturation. And that maturation depends on relationship with human beings. So I think if I was, if I was on the education system, I would introduce computers maybe in grade 11 or 12. Okay. And really, and, and, and kids wouldn't have missed anything because they can pick up like that how to use that stuff. And write things longhand and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, 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 I would still make them do mathematics. That would make their brains do work. Okay. Um, I, I would uh, have them define their own educational goals. I would have them do research. That doesn't appear at the click of a, a thumb. Go to the library. But they have to go to the library and they have to really look it up and get a sense of what it's like to really look for something. And then you give them the tools. Oh, now you can do this stuff. Here's a much easier way to do it. But it's not about the teaching, it's about what helps people, human beings, develop into an autonomous, curious, self-motivated, individuated human being. Yeah. And virtually everything about digital media undermines those qualities. Right. Yeah, I think about my great teachers, and maybe even like a jujitsu teacher. I mean, yeah. they come and, you know, it's like these, you know, great you know, you know, Chinese martial arts movies, you know, they, mm. they their time with you, you know, snatch the pebble from my hand, they give you challenges you can't figure out, they always know how to dial it in, mm -hmm. how to push you, how to bring, I mean, that's a, that's a relationship. It's a relational right? uh, yeah. interaction, absolutely. It's not about information, It's not about information. And, yeah. And again, this is with full respect for the power of the media and the value and the amazing services and, and it can provide, uh, there's no denying that, there's no point being a Luddite about it. It's just a question of recognizing where in child development does it actually fit in and where is it going to be support and when is it a detriment. And in this society, it's gone rampant. Okay. And, and you even see, I mean, in Vancouver I see this, I'm sure you see it in London, a parent is pushing a kid in the tram and what the parent doing? Interacting with their cell phones. What's the message to the kid? They're not important. That I'm not important. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell my wife right now to get all the devices out of the house.